Welcome back. It's time for a Thanksgiving DIY. Monique's making us a placemat with meaning. Here's what you need. Assorted fabrics or shirts of choice, some scissors, a ruler, a pencil, safety pins, needle and strong thread, a rotary cutter, and self-healing mat, but those last two are optional there. Mo, I love that this project is a way to preserve some history and make something practical. Plus, it's going to make for a great conversation piece yes. at your Thanksgiving table as well. How do we start? Yeah, so this is a DIY that is close to my heart. And you know, with the seasons changing, you know, fall is upon us. This is a chance where we like to declutter, you know, get rid of some of, of the old things and old clothes that we have hanging around. And so for this project, I actually made these placemats using the girls' old crib sheets. So definitely a great way to create this heirloom piece that can be passed down from generation to generation and that the family, yes, can enjoy and have a conversation with at the dinner table. So to start off with this project, because it is a braided placemat, we're going to have to work with strips of fabric. And so when you have um, your fabric here, so I have the blanket, some remnants of it <laughs> that's left over. So I folded it over. And so what I love about this self-healing mat, and again, it's not mandatory, but it is great in terms of cutting because you can cut your strips using your standard pair of scissors. But I find that using this rotary cutter makes things so much easier. So you just go ahead and you pop that blade right out. And then you go ahead and you cut along. So you draw your lines with your ruler as well as your pencil. And then you go ahead and you just press down on there like so. And then your strips just start lifting up. You may have to double over there a little bit, but you cut and then you have your strips. Now you are cutting, how big are the strips that you're cutting? So they're about an inch in width. And so because I wanted to go with that thin braided look, I wanted to go with a thinner strip. But of course you can get you can go with a wider strip. You can go about two, two and a half inches if you wanted to go with that chunkier look. Uh, I think you have a tip for us also if, if mm -hmm. folks want to use t-shirts instead. Yeah, so because this is fabric that you're using, you can use your scraps that you have. You can use old t-shirts that are hanging around as well. I would suggest that with your t-shirt, you cut the hem off the bottom and then you can cut along the side and then you have a wider piece of fabric that you can work with. And then you can go ahead with your folding and then do your cutting of your strips when you're using something like a t-shirt or even if you're, if you're using like a pair of pants. I find with the fabric as well, um, with the sheet that I use, I find that, and I actually really love this, that it created that frayed effect as I cut. And so if you really aren't into having that frayed effect, you can also go with the jersey material that you have in the t-shirts and you won't really have as much fraying. Okay, that's a really good tip. So what is our next step? So our next step is to start braiding. So what you're gonna do after you have your strips cut, you're gonna grab your three strips, and then what you're gonna do, I like to secure mine with a pin at first, and then you can go ahead and sew those ends together. And so you're gonna have that sewn, and then what you can do is you're gonna pin that strip. You could pin it to the table if you have a sofa, or if you're working on the floor, you could essentially just secure it somewhere because you're going to be tugging and pulling. I'm gonna just use my handy tandy dining chair table here. And then you're gonna start your braiding like so. And then you just continue along. And sometimes you may have to pull your strip out just to make sure it doesn't get tangled because yes, it's like braiding hair. You just want to continue going along and then you continue along until you have you're at the end of your fabric essentially okay so you've so. done the braid but it looks like you have one long braid for your placemat so how did you like how do you connect them okay so that is actually really easy and it's more it's it's way easier than it looks so what you're going to do is you're going to take the end of your braid right you have your strip you have the end what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and take your new strip of fabric that you have and you're going to fold it over, grab your, snip, your scissors and you're just gonna snip, just snip a small hole there and do it as well on your strip. So you're gonna have two snips going on there. You're gonna stack your new strip on top of the end and all you're gonna do is just thread 
it through like so, and then boom, you have mm. a strip. And then you're going to continue that along with the other two. And then continue breeding. So then you're going to go ahead and start sewing. So what I what you do is you just take the end that you started off with of your braid. You're going to tuck it in about an inch and a half. You're going to get your needle and your thread, and you're going to sew it and secure it. And then you're going to go ahead and continuously spiral around and stitch while you're doing that at the same time. So you're going to spiral, stitch, spiral, stitch again, and stitch again. And you're just going to continue until you're at the end of your braid. And Mo, do you care if you can actually see the stitches or is that sort of part of the charm? No, no, actually. And if you want to have it that way, absolutely. But really, that's the underside of your placemat. So no one's going to see it anyway. It doesn't even have to be organized or anything of that nature. You just keep on going until you're at the very end of your braid. And once you're done there, you just continue along and you find you have the size that you need, just go ahead and take your needle and thread again and just sew the end underneath and tuck it in. And then you're good to go. You have your placemat. Such a lovely project thing.